This week on Inside Boulder News, seniors have a new option for affordable housing in Boulder. Western Disposal begins distributing retrofitted bear-resistant carts to customers. And you're invited to Boulder's largest fireworks display at Ralphie's Independence Day Blast this 4th of July. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Ashley Prill. Seniors in our community have a new option for affordable housing. The Highmar Senior Community held its grand opening this week thanks to a partnership between the City of Boulder and Boulder Housing Partners. Highmar is located in South Boulder and has 59 rental units. Permanently affordable housing for seniors has been very difficult to get developed in this community. And um, in fact, this is one of the first, um, what the second one since 1982 of permanently affordable housing. In our market area, there's about 600 affordable units for seniors. Only about 12 of those are two bedroom units. And this creates an incredible opportunity for people. As we all know, the silver tsunami is coming. There's lots of demand for senior housing. This is an opportunity for Boulder to house many of its own seniors, as well as help families stay together in this community and across the generations. Affordable housing is, is really critical to the city of Boulder. We have, uh, it's a very expensive place to live, obviously, and we're losing the diversity that we once had in this town. And so using affordable housing, we can, at all income levels, we can, we can help folks out and sort of preserve what Boulder used to be and preserve a community that's not just homogenous, but that is made up of all types and is inclusive. For more information about the Highmar Senior Community, log on to boulderhousing.org where you can find qualifications and the rental application. You can also stop by the property or call Boulder Housing Partners at 720-564-4610. Back in March, the City of Boulder passed a new ordinance that requires trash and compost be secured from bears at all times until it's collected by your waste hauler. The ordinance applies to all residential and commercial properties located west of Broadway and south of Sumac Avenue. In order to meet the new requirements, locally owned trash collection and recycling business Western Disposal designed retrofits to their existing carts and dumpsters. Well, since the new ordinance is passed, rather than uh, buying all new certified carts. For one, they're very expensive. For two, it would have been very wasteful for us to discard all the existing carts we have out on the street. So we set out to retrofit our own. Now we successfully have certified all three of our cart sizes. So we're uh, right now doing the uh, assembly of the retrofit. And this week we started rolling the carts out and delivering them on the street. Western Disposal plans to deliver bear-resistant carts to customers on compost day as they are manufactured. They expect the first zone to take three to four months to complete. Western Disposal customers will not be charged any additional fees for these carts until January 2015. We've decided to waive any charges until next year to where we can see the real true cost of this complete rollout and uh, any operating costs that might incur before we decide what the rate's gonna be. Boulder residents and businesses will be given ample time to obtain bear resistant carts before any enforcement begins and before any tickets are issued. At this time, the city will announce the enforcement dates as soon as the private waste collection companies have determined when they can begin replacing existing carts with new bear resistant carts. So as soon as those options and services are available, the city will set the enforcement dates. If you're looking for more information about securing your trash and compost from bears or want the latest updates on the timeline, you can visit boulderwildlifeplan.net. This weekend, Boulder will host its very first half marathon that both starts and ends downtown. The Heart and Soul Half Marathon has been held at the Boulder Reservoir for the past five years, but on Sunday morning, the race will kick off at the intersection of 14th and Pearl. So we will have road closures throughout downtown Sunday morning, beginning at 4.30 a.m., um, with the expectation of roads being open by noon. Uh, there will be some challenges getting around the area. We just ask people to plan ahead um, look at your routes, take alternate routes if possible, 
Uh, there will be some streets, including Pine, that you can use to get across through the downtown area to access the churches and other neighborhoods within downtown. The race begins at 7.15 on Sunday morning and is expected to finish by 11 a.m. There will be a finish line festival and expo for spectators. To see the complete course map or find out more details, log on to heartandsoulhalf.com. You always hear how many people bike in Boulder, but on Wednesday you could actually see them. Over 5,000 cyclists took part in the 38th annual Bike to Work Day in Boulder. So Community Cycles has been coordinating this event for about six years and um, we just feel like it's the culmination of a lot of the work that we do at the city to promote biking and a lot of the work that we do on our own to promote biking. So we do things like teach people how to bike safely, teach people how to work on their bike, uh, set people up with bicycles, very cheap or sometimes free, and um, just make it easier and break down on the barriers for bicycling for people and uh, work with them on how they would take transit with biking, all sorts of things like that. And this day is all about breaking down those barriers and rewarding people for giving it a try. You know, it's so easy to do because there's the bike paths are amazing and a lot of times uh, if, if I'm going on a route I'm unfamiliar with, I'll check it out ahead of time and then once, once you're on that route and you know it, it's so simple. I like that people are polite. I had friends come from the East Coast last week and we were biking around town and they couldn't believe that people stop and let you cross in the crosswalk and you know stuff we take for granted so it's a nice thing here. To find out more about cycling in Boulder log on to communitycycles.org. Last weekend, McGuckin Hardware hosted its first pet expo since opening in 1978. The event featured food and treat vendors, trainers, photographers, adoption services, and raised almost $500 to benefit the Humane Society of Boulder Valley. If you missed the pet expo and are still looking for the perfect pet, visit the Humane Society of Boulder Valley on 55th Street or check out the website at boulderhumane.org. The Star Spangled Splash event at the Boulder Reservoir returns for its second year on Friday, July 4th. The family-friendly event is free for kids 12 and younger and will feature live music, wow bubbles, hydro bikes, airbrush tattoos, and more. Wristbands are required for anyone ages 13 and up and can be purchased in advance at the Boulder Res and at the recreation centers. Wright Kingdom Real Estate, the City of Boulder, and CU are teaming up again to bring you the largest fireworks display in Boulder County. Ralphie's Independence Day Blast will take place at Folsom Field on Friday, July 4th. The celebration is free and open to the public and will begin at 8.30 p.m. Gates open half an hour before the program begins, and free hop and buff bus service will be provided from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. from downtown city parking garages and 29th Street to Folsom Field and back. Remember, you'll need to leave alcohol, glass bottles or cans, and umbrellas at home. For the full list of stadium guidelines, as well as event details, log on to boulder4thofjuly.com. Thank you for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe.